This was organized uh, fairly quickly upon very, very short notice. Uh, so, Baruch Hashem, uh, uh, all of us are very, very gratified that uh, you're giving us a few days uh, to come and, and, and learn. And uh, Baruch Hashem, it's a very great credit that even a balabayat, that is Tarud Baparnasa, understands that uh, the Iker in life is uh, the Kviyas Itim Torah. And uh, Baruch Hashem, the whole point would not just be what you do here, but you know, take it back and, and continue to be Isaac in Sugyas, in Taira Hashem. And in that way, uh, you remain a Ben Taira forever. You know, my, my colleague, my chaver, Rav Aaron Lapiansky, I'm from Silver Spring, Maryland, and he's the Rosh Hashim in Silver Spring, wrote a very excellent book, mainly for younger people, but even the, we older folks can, can benefit from it, about how to remain a Ben Taira for life. That's the name of the book, Ben Taira for Life that even when uh, you're not in a full-time kolel or base medrash, you still got to continue to grow, you got to shtike. Uh, Aliyah and Taira is not an all or nothing. People make a mistake sometimes. I'm either like fully immersed or forget about it. That's a very, very big mistake. A person has to grow. Uh, so in whatever environment you're in, you know, you can become a Talmud Chacham, you can finish Shas, you can know many, many sugyas. And if we have the opportunity to do it, that means we have the responsibility to do it. Anything we're able to do in Ruchnias, HaKadosh Baruch Hu expects us to do. So the sugya of the Yarchei Kala uh, is an union of Tosefes Shabbos. Uh, I just have to start, although it's really not, not in proper sequence. As, as those of you from America know, the early Shabbos is a very, very common practice uh, in the United States. Uh, in Eretz Yisrael, the G'dayli Yisrael have actually frowned upon it, Rebbe Yashiv, Rebbe Shlomo Zalman, although you American uh, upstarts who come into Eretz Yisrael, you want to start your early Shabbos. So Lemaisi, you see it here as well. I used to be an American too. Uh, uh, and um, so somebody asked Rebbe Yashiv, what's so bad, early Shabbos, Tosefes Shabbos, accepting Shabbos? He says, what's the problem, a mitzvah to, to accept Shabbos? So Rebbe Yashiv said, well, uh, he's, what did he say? He said, um, my Rev is wrong, Kiddush is wrong, Meal is wrong, Kriyashma is wrong, everything else is fine about, about the early Shabbos <laughs> and the like. So we're going to talk about those in Yonim uh, and, of course, other issues about uh, if, I, if my wife is Makabal Shabbos, does it bind me? And special rules about Yom Tov Shavuos and Yom Tov Sheni in the Golas, so I will come to those things. But today I really want to talk about an introduction, and a lot of what I'm going to talk about is Lav Davka in your materials. So, Baruch Hashem, you have, we have Rav Weinstein, one of our eminent rabbeim, who will be uh, the Shail and Meshiv, or the Meshiv, who will deal with uh, questions you have on the actual Makairis. But what I want to talk about today is much more in the uh, nature of some introductory yesodos that maybe you, you need to, to understand before you can even look at the particular sources. And again, I apologize. Some of what my, I, I would say, many of you probably already know, so. Uh, Please forgive me for repeating uh, what may be Dvarim Pshutim, but it's still Kedai to be sure that everybody is starting uh, at, the same, at the same page. First of all, the concept of being Mosef Michol al the notion of somehow taking the weekday and transfer, transforming it into the Kedusha of Shabbos is a well-known idea, and it's brought down that there's a mitzvah of Tosefes Shabbos both before Shabbos on Friday and indeed, after Shabbos, to add it on as well. Now, first of all, though, there is a huge, huge machlokas. If Tosefes Shabbos, the ability to be maisif, michol al Shabbos, is a dairais or a uh, It's Yadua that the sheet of the Rambam learns that only Tosefes Yom Kippurim is dairais, because there you have a drasha. It said, the, the, the Torah says by Yom Kippur, batisha la chaydesh ba'erev, on the ninth day of Tishrei, towards evening, so it doesn't mean when it's already evening, because that would be the tenth day, but it means towards evening. May Erev ad Erev Tishbesu Shabbatchem. From evening to evening shall you observe this as a day of rest, a day of atonement. By the way, just a little aside, it's very, very interesting that when the Rambam codifies the laws of Yom Kippur, he actually invents well, he has, he has one section in the Mishnah Torah, which is the Avodah of Yom Kippur, the Karbanos. That's called Hilchos Avodas Yom Kippurim. But when he codifies the law of the fast of Yom Kippur, he invents uh, a very creative name. He calls it Hilchos Shevisas Osor. 
He doesn't call it Hilchos Yom Kippur, and he doesn't even include it in Hilchos Tanis, which is a separate section. It is called the Laws of Resting on the 10th of Tishrei. And the Rambam understands that Yom Kippur is a day of Shavisa, not only from Malacha, but also from eating, which means the point is not to fast, the point is to rest from Aveda, you know, physical Agashmias and the like. So the Rambam learns, based on the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah, that the Drasha Batisha Lachaydash Boerev teaches me there is a Chiyav of Tosefes Yom HaKippurim. Tosefes Yom HaKippurim is Diyaraisa, but Einochinami, Tosefes Shabbos, Lo Matsino. We don't have any Drasha about being Maisef Michal Lachaydash by Shabbos, which means uh, many Rishinim actually learn that Tosefes Shabbos, both before and after, is only Midrabanan, and it's only Tosefes Yom Kippur, that's the Arisa. Other Rishayim understands that um, we learn out Shabbos and Yom Tif from Yom Kippur, that Tosefes is the Arisa. So that's issue number one. Everybody's Maida, there is a Chiv of Tosefes. The Machloka says, is Tosefes Shabbos the Arisa, or only Drabanan? Now, what is the shear of Tosefes? So there, again, whether it's the Arisa or the Rabbanan, the Chiyav of being Maisef is even a Masho, even one minute or two minutes before this man that Shabbos begins. And the earliest you could be Makabel Shabbos or Yom Tif, according to the Shulchan Aruch, again, everything is ultimately a Machlokas, if you go far back enough, is the Zman of Plag HaMincha. I'm going, I'm going to describe that in, in, in great detail. Uh, in a few in a few minutes, so you can't be Makabel Shabbos today, right? I can't make an early Shabbos and start it uh, Monday <laughs> afternoon, but it's Plag Hamincha of of Erev Shabbos. Now, I just want to raise an interesting question, just so you can think about and discuss, and that is the following: If I hold that Teisefes Shabbos is only Midrabanan, and the Oraisa, even if I'm Makabel Shabbos, it does not have Kedusha Shabbos Minatayra it's only Midrabanan, then definitionally, isn't your early Shabbos going to be dead in the water? Because how could I be Mekayim Kiddush in a period of time that is not Shabbos to Orisa? Bishlama, if Tosef Shabbos, is the Orisa. So it has Kedusha Shabbos. It has Kedusha Shabbos. So Mamela, I could even make Kiddush during that time. But if Tosef Shabbos is the Gami Midrabanan, how can I make Kiddush? Now, we're going to see, again, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're going to see that the Mishnah Bura brings a Chumrah that some say the Su'udas Shabbos can only be eaten on Shabbos proper. So the Mishnah Bura says it's advisable, therefore, even if you're making an early Shabbos, at least a Kezayis of bread should be eaten after it says HaKechavah. But even the Mishnah Bura that gives you the Chumrah of eating a Kezayis of bread after Tzai Sakechavim has no problem with early Kiddush. In other words, the only problem is the Kiyom of the Sa'uda. So I'll just give you that as a question uh, to think about. Is it Yitochen that I could be Yotzei Kiddush in a Zman that does not have Kedushat Shabbos on a do raisa dika, dika level. Again, but I don't want to confuse you. Bottom line, la halacha is you can. In other words, uh, we're going to see uh, early kiddush is vadai uh, okay, subject to my revisions we'll talk about. So I'm not questioning the halacha. I'm, I'm not raising a halachic issue per se. I'm raising a svara problem. How is it, how is it possible? Okay, so that's the union of, of Maisif and Michael ala kiddush. Now, there are certain inyanim where we don't rely on Tosefes. Uh, so, for example, uh, Leil Pesach. Leil Pesach, right, so the Shulchan Aruch says you're not allowed to make Kiddush until nightfall. I right? cannot allow, you can have a Myrav early, you can have a Myrav early, you can be Makabal Yamtiv early. You can't make Kiddush until which is night. And the Mishnah Rura brings, again, this is from Rishonim, really, but the Mishnah Rura brings that one of the reasons is that uh, since there's going to be a chi of the Arisa to eat matzah, 
and matzah is compared to the korban pesach. So whenever the Torah says Lila, Lila, Taisefes is not going to help because Taisefes Shabbos does not mean I turned Friday afternoon into night. It works the other way. It means I brought the halachas of Shabbos into the day. But even if I bring the halachas of Shabbos into the day, that does not make it night. And because it does not make it night, any mitzvah that is totally on night cannot be fulfilled in the period of Tesefes. And since matzah is iskish, is compared to the Korban Pesach, and the Korban Pesach is bedavka at night, so it's not shayach Tesefes. Now, again, you can ask another, once again, I'll throw out the kasha, if Tesefes yomtif is the gamri midrabanan, why do I need the drasha? If it's tetzach, I can't be, I mean, that's another kasha. Why do I need the mahalich of night? But okay, but let's just go that this is a presupposing Tesefes yomtif is the araisa, a filohachi, it doesn't help at, at night. Uh, based on this, another example, where it's not shayach uh, Tesefes, or at least uh, you're not allowed to be mekel on Tesefes, is the first night of Shavuos. Again, in Eretz Yisrael, the only night of, of Shavuos. Uh, where, now this is again a machlekes, this is a meforsum dika halacha of the Taz, which not everybody agrees with, not everybody agrees. The Taz says that on the first night of Shavuos, you also cannot make Kiddush early, because since Shavuos has to be tamimais after 50 complete days, or 49 complete days of the Aymer, doing it early would be a chisarain in tamimais. This is a famous halacha of the Taz. Now, a few points about the Taz, or two points about the Taz you need to be aimed on. Point number one is, the Taz is not negating Kabbalah's Yom Tov. He is simply negating Kiddush. And therefore, number two, many Achronim say the Taz does not have a problem with Arvis, with Davening Mairuf. It's only a problem with Kiddush. And yet, many Achronim do extend the Taz, and they apply the Taz not only, in fact, this is the common minog in uh, Yeshiva Sheminyanim, that not only do they not make Kiddush until night, but they also don't dive in Myriv till night because since Myriv is uh, already sh a Shavuah stick of davening, they apply the law of Tamimais. On the other hand, as I say from the Taz himself, the Taz is talking about Kiddush. The Taz is not talking about uh, Arvis. So we have uh, the issue of uh, Pesach, which is Vade only a Kiddush halacha. We have the issue of Shavuos, which is a, a Machlokas if it's Kiddush or even, even Myriv. And then we have the first night of Sukkot. The first night of Sukkot, the Gemara Darshans, has the same halacha of Pesach because of a Gezei Rishava, Chamisha Asar, Chamisha Asar. So the same restriction you have, Leil Pesach, you're also going to have the first night of Sukkot, which is Vada only a Kiddush restriction. And therefore the halacha is, we don't make Kiddush Leil Sukkot, the first night of Sukkot, and Chutz is the first, the first two nights of Sukkot. Uh, because of Lila. Now, there's the Yisait Advarim is, again, just to go over this again, that whenever there's a Hakpada on Lila, Taisefes Yom Tov does not make it Lila. Similarly, when there's a din of Tamimais, Taisefes Yom Tov is not going to be Tamimos because Lamaisa, you haven't completed the day. So when there's Tamimais and when there's Lila, uh, it's not shayach. You could be makabal yamtip, but, but it's not shayach to do the mitzvah during that tekufa. Now, let me mention uh, yet another uh, aspect uh, that we see in the Haggadah, which really brings this out, but it's not the pashat pshat in the Haggadah, the way people learn. Haggadah shal pesach. If you remember, um, it's interesting uh, that you know, people are, they tend to be fresher, more awake, more energetic at the beginning of the Seder. Uh, and as things go on, you know, we get more tired and, and, and everything else. We get hungry. We're approaching Shulchan Aruch. But the truth of the matter is, one has to know that the most beloved parts of the Haggadah are not really fulfilling the mitzvah of the Haggadah Bichlau. They are in the nature of an introduction. For example, the four sons. Everybody loves the four sons. Right? 
The four sons is, is not a key of Yitzhiyah's Mesipa Yitzhiyah at all. The four sons is a hakdama that when you're about to tell the story, you got to adjust it to each type of personality. It, it's, a, it's a hakdama. It's not the story. The story is the part when everybody falls asleep, Irami Obeidavi. That's Badafka, the part that, unfortunately, many people are not even interested in. That is the mitzvah of Sipri Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim together with Rabban Gamliel. But in the uh, Hakdama part, in the first part of the Seder, that's the Hakdama, so it, so it discusses how do you know the Zman when you're supposed to do the mitzvah? So it says, Yochel Meresh Chaydesh. I might have thought that maybe the mitzvah of Sipri Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim should begin all the way back from Rosh Chodesh Nisan because that is when Meish Rabbeinu was commanded about the Korban Pesach. Talmud Laimar, the Torah says, V'yigadah tel levincha bayom ahu. The mitzvah is on the day of Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim. Now then it says like this. So how do you translate this? Okay, so we know the mitzvah is bayom ahu. Tesvav. But then the Haggadah asks, it's really from the Mechilta, the Haggadah asks another kasha, Yachal mi baidyaim. Maybe we should do it mi baidyaim. Tamid Laima, Bavorzeh, because of the Korban Pesach, which is eaten at night. Now, what is the kasha of Yachal mi baidyaim? So, virtually every translation of the Haggadah says, Maybe we should do the mitzvah during the day of the 15th. Maybe we should make the Seder the day of the 15th. Talmud Leimer, it has to be at the time of the Korban Pesach. But the emesis, even though that is absolutely the standard translation of that part of the Haggadah, it actually does not fit the words. Because the word mibod yom always connotes an earlier point, not a later point. So, some of Forsham actually learn that the Yochel Mebajayim is asking the Kasha, perhaps we could be Makayim, the Haggadah, through Tosefes Yamtif. In other words, yeah, we know we're going to do it at night, but maybe we could be Maisif. Talmud Laimar, it's connected to the Karpin Pesach. So, it's Mamish Fakir. I, I, again, my guess is that most of you, if you were translating the other, probably did not learn that way because that's not the Pashat Pshat. And that's not uh, the normal translation of that part of the Haggadah, but it actually fits the Mibay Yaim that it's not Shaykh to Sefes Yamtif on Sipri Yitzhiyah Smitzrayim because it's compared to Pesach. Pesach is, is night. Okay. So now, I mentioned Plag HaMincha, the earliest that you could be Makabal Shabbos, and this includes Lich Benching, lighting candles, is something that is called Plag HaMincha. Half of the Mincha. What is Plag HaMincha? So here I got to, again, go over some foundational basic information about a Jewish day. How is a Jewish day divided? Uh, it's interesting. Uh, there's much more complication how you divide a Jewish day than how you divide a Jewish night. Once you're night, you're night. And night is more or less undifferentiated, except for Chatzais or whatever, or Mishmaris of Malachim, which is more of a Kabbalistic idea. But day is really, really important because we have Zman Kriyashma and we have Zman Tfila and then we have Zman Mincha and then we have Plaka Mincha. So you need to know how to divvy up a, a day. So here is the thing. Uh, we know astronomically there is sunrise, sunset, and even that has, you know, everything has uncertainties. And then we have what are called twilight periods before sunrise and twilight periods after sunset. Meaning, uh, you move from total darkness to partial light, then you have sunrise, and at the end of the day, you move from sunset to partial light, and then darkness. Right, so these are called the nishafim, these are called twilight periods. Now, the essential twilight periods of the day is the period between Amud HaShachar and Neitzachama. Neitzachama is the rising of the sun. And the definition, interestingly enough, the halachic definition of sunrise is not exactly the same as the astronomical definition of sunrise when you look at a chart. Because the halachic definition of sunrise is when the first bit of the sun can be visible over the horizon. 
And shkia is when none of the sun is visible over the horizon. So you're going from first emergence to total shkia. Astronomically, the definition of sunrise is midpoint to midpoint, which, which again, it may only be a matter of a minute or so, and that is sunrise is when the midpoint of the sun is above the horizon, and sunset is when the midpoint is below the horizon, even though there's still some of the sun above, which actually means, and I'm not even addressing the issue of is Shkia measured at sea level or Shkia is measured at elevations, that's another, that's another question. I'm talking about even if you posit Mamish, a sea level situation, you will still have a divergence between the astronomical definition of sunset and the halachic definition. And then it gets more complicated when you're dealing with elevations, mountains, uh, and the like, which you know, hopefully we'll get to. Okay, so Amud HaShachar is the appearance of the first light in the east horizon before the orb of the sun is visible. It's before Shkia. The Gemara says in Masech Shabbos that Amud HaShachar is the amount of time it would take to walk for meal. A meal is 2,000 amos. As you know, uh, that itself is what's an amma, etc. Now, there's a huge machlokas. What is the shior? What is, when Chazal talk about the amount of time it takes to walk a meal, obviously people walk at different speeds. What is the amount of time Chazal had in mind? So, the main shita is a meal is an hiluch of 18 minutes. Some have a shita of 22.5 minutes. You'll see why this is important. And some have a shita of 24 minutes. So whatever the shear of hiluch mil is, it would be four times 18, or four times 22.5, or four times 24 before sunrise. And that's the neshef haboker, the twilight of the morning, that is called Amud HaShachar. Now, if you do your math, uh, if Hiluch Mil is 18 minutes, Amud HaShachar will be 72 minutes before sunrise. 22.5, Amud HaShachar will be 90 minutes before sunrise. If it's 24.5, that's almost two hours before sunrise. Again, I, I, I'm not even going to mention this sheet anymore because all of the posts can say this is inexplicable to the Mitzias. Two hours before sunrise, uh, you, you don't see any light at all. So in active play are only the views of 18 minutes or 22.5 minutes, which gives you the shear of 72 minutes, which is the most common sheet, because 18 minutes is normally followed. By the way, Stogea Chametz as well. This is where you get 18 minutes of Chametz. Why do you say, if water hits flour, and it's there for 18 minutes without working the dough, the dough is chametz. Where do you get 18 minutes? It's, a, it's, it, it's the exact halacha. The Gemara in Pesachim says, the shear of chimutz is kedei hiluch mil. Mimela, we're machmer in 18 minutes. For chametz, for sure we're machmer with 18 minutes. That that's why it becomes chametz. Like the other opinion, you'd have 22.5 minutes or 24 minutes, but, we, but again, we're not so much of that. Now, when we say Amud HaShachar, so let's, let's go with the basic halacha, that Amud HaShachar is 72 minutes before sunrise. Uh, before halachic shkia, I don't mean astronomical shkia. So the question is, are those 72 fixed minutes, or will they vary with time of year? So this too is a machlokah. So there, there are some that do have the shita that Amud HaShachar remains fixed. Lamaisa, even though that is a very, very common hanhaga, very common, in fact, it may be the most common hanhaga, l'chaira, it's almost certainly wrong. And, and the poskim say that technically Amud HaShachar should be measured, and this is a little complicated, and I, I, I myself don't fully get all the science, but the basic concept I think is clear, is you measure things by the solar angle of depression of the darkness, meaning to say the following. When Chazal give you a time for Nishafim, 
they are referring uh, to the equinox day. Now, there's an equinox day is a perfect 12-hour day from sunrise to sunset. Sunrise, sunset, 12 hours. So, Bechiyai Gavna, the, the Neshef Haboker is 72 minutes before that. So, as the day, uh, so you have to measure, so to speak. It's, it's not Shosmanias, it's different than Shosmanias. But it simply means you have to measure the angle of darkness 72 minutes before sunrise on a, an equinox day. And any day that has that measure of darkness that'll be a, or, or light will be Amud HaShachar. So, for example, on an equinox day, the angle of depression is around 16 degrees below the horizon. So any day that's 16 degrees below the horizon is Amud HaShachar. And that can range, therefore, uh, between 80 to even 50. And again, it's not a function of summer and winter necessarily. In point of fact, uh, the twilight periods are longer in winter than they are in spring. It's, it's, it's a different type of cheshvan. Do not confuse this with long day, short day. It is a different calculation that does not completely correlate. Although it's true that the neshef in the summer is longer than the neshef in the winter. That's true. But it's also true the neshef of the winter is longer than spring and autumn. So it's not a function of length and day. So this is what we call amut hashachar. Now, on the opposite end of it, we know that when the sun sets, we enter into a period that is called Bain Hashmashos. Now, this will be a huge machlokas in the Gaonim and Rabbeinu Tam. It's, it's hard to bring out everything. Right now, I'm just going to go with the Shita of the Gaonim, knowing that there's an, a whole other Shita here. The Gaonim is the simplest Shita. The Gaonim is the Shita that is actually followed la halacha. People, some people keep Rabbeinu Tam as a Chumrah, but the Iker halacha is like the Gaonim. The Gaonim say that from the time the sun sets until the period of called Tzesa Kochavim, we enter into a twilight period, and that twilight period is called Bein Hashmashais. Bein Hashmashais. Bein Hashmashais is halachically a Safek Yom. The Gemara says there are three possibilities about Bein Hashmashais. Bein Hashmashais might be day, it might be night, or at some point in the middle of Bein Hashmashas, you move from day to night. Which means it's a Suffolk Yom, Suffolk Laila until we have Tzesa Kachavim, which I'm not even going to define right now. So once again, I'm going to throw out a conceptual kasha for you to think about. And that is, given the fact that the period between Amud HaShachar and Nates is a morning twilight period. And the period between Shkia and Sesa Kochavim is the evening twilight period. One is called the Neshef Haboker and one is called the Neshef Halayla. Why does Halacha treat them in so many opposite ways? Meaning the following. The Neshef Haboker is halachically day for all purposes. I mean, at least b'dieved. I mean, there are the chatchilas there. B'dieved, you could vaday daven shachris from the neshef haboker. It's not a suffek yom, suffek laila. It's vaday considered yom b'dieved. Even though midrabanan, there are certain hidurim of waiting. And yet, the twilight of the evening is a suffek yom, suffek laila. Meaning, we still consider it as we don't know if it's day or night. I mean, couldn't you say the same thing? I mean, why, why can't I say the same thing about the morning between Amur HaShachar and Nates? Is a Suffolk Yom Suffolk Laila. And yet, that's not the halacha. You can do a bris, well, again, a very practical example. You can do a bris, which is not kosher at night. A bris is not kosher at night. You can do a bris from Amur HaShachar. You cannot do a bris, Bein HaShmashas. Because Bein HaShmashah is a Suffolk Laila. Amud HaShachar is Vad HaYom. So given the fact that both of them are Neshef, twilight periods, 
And indeed, astronomically, that's how they would be called. They're called twilight periods. Why is there enough gemina between the Neshef Haboker and the Neshef Ha'erif? Okay, again, I'm asking more questions than I'm answering, just, again, something to think about that halacha does not treat them the same, uh, the same way. Okay. Now, what is Palak HaMincha? Because remember, Palak HaMincha is very important because that is the earliest siman you could be Makabel Shabbos. You cannot light candles before Palak HaMincha. Now, the truth of the matter is, <laughs> one of the things you, you encounter in, in looking at this sugya is there, there is not a single prat that does not have numerous machloksim. In fact, they bring from the Truma Sadeshen a very, very strange thing. The Truma Sadeshen says, in Germany, Truma Sadeshen was one of the greatest, the greatest of the early Akronim. Uh, he was, lived in Germany in the uh, 1300s, early 1400s. And he just writes that people used to be Makabal Shabbos like three or four hours before uh, Friday, and they would uh, finish their meal, and they would still be able to spazir. They would walk by the banks of the river while it was still day, and they got home before, you know, et cetera. Uh, so the Truma Sedeshin apparently held you could be Makabal Shabbos a lot earlier than we do. And, and again, the Meforshim and the Postgame have a lot of problems just understanding this. But I'm going to go again. I'm going to try to keep it relatively simple in a complex sugya. And we're going to go with Kabbalah Shabbos, Plak HaMincha. So what is Plak HaMincha? So we know that we have uh, two definitions of mincha. Mincha is, is actually a reference to bringing the korban tamid, shalbein arbayim, in the mikdash. We have what is called mincha gedola, and we have what is called mincha ketana. Mincha gedola, in terms of the temple service, is the earliest time that the korban tamid of the afternoon was kosher. Mincha ketana was the optimal time when they actually brought it. So Mincha Gedola is six and a half hours from the start of the day. We'll talk about what that is. Mincha Kitana is uh, two and a half hours before the end of the day. So that, that's what? That's, uh, uh, that's nine and a half Wait, hours. Which start of the day? Huh? Okay, that's, that's what I'm going to talk about. Okay, okay, okay. So Mincha Gedola, six and a half. Mincha Ketana, nine and a half. Mincha Gedola, Mincha Ketana. Uh, Machlokas, if you have a choice to dive in Mincha in those two periods, which is better? Is Mincha Gedola better because Zerizin Makdimim Le Mitzvahs? Or is Mincha Ketana better because that is the actual Zaman of the Korban Tamid, the Minig of the Yeshivas? although it may not be for this reason, as we try to dive in closer to Mincha Gedola. Uh, others say, actually, it's better to do Mincha Ketana. Okay, now, six and a half hours, nine and a half hours. Starting from what? So this, once again, is a huge machlokas. When we measure the day for Mincha and for even Zman Kriyashman for Tefillah, are we measuring from Amud HaShachar to Tzeis HaKochavim, dawn to stars, a longer day? Or are we measuring from Neitzachama, sunrise, to Shkia, sunset? What is your day upon which you are measuring? I'm just using Mincha for an example here. The six and a half or the two and a half? The Gra, again, this is based on Rishonim, but, but, but the Gra, the Balatanya, says we measure all Sha'os of the day from Nates to Shkia. Therefore, according to the Gra, six and a half hours means six and a half hours from sunrise, and Mincha Kitana is nine and a half hours from sunrise. And once you've established your day as sunrise to sunset, you then have to work with the concept of sha'os zamanios, meaning, meaning, again, that an hour is not defined as 60 minutes. An hour is defined as one-twelfth 
of your daylight time. So in the winter, an hour where you have a shorter day, sunrise, sunset, an hour could be as short as 50 minutes or less. And in the summer, an hour can be as long as 70 minutes. So it's Shaos Zamanios from Nate to Shkia. The Mogin Avram and the Bach say that the halachic definition of a day for this calculation is from Amud HaShachar, let's say that's 72 minutes before sunrise, to Tseisa Kechavim of Rabbeinu Tam, which happens to also be 72 minutes <coughs> after. So, and you then, you then divide that period in 12. Now there's everybody's moda that the second step is Sho Samanias meaning you divide your day by 12, and that is your definition of an hour. Nobody is going with a 60-minute hour. You're going with one twelfth of your daylight measure, but like the gra, your daylight measure is sunrise to sunset, like the bach, uh, and uh, your, your day is measured by uh, Amuda Shachar, of, of, of Tam. That's also important, like Rabbeinu Tam. So, this is how you calculate Zaman Kriyashma. This is why you see, right, every Luach, right, you always see that uh, the Mogen of Ram's time for Shema is this, and the Vilna Gon's time for Shema is that. Vilna Gon is always later, right, so we all like to be Litva, we all like to follow the Vilna Gon uh, in this. Although, since Kriyashma is the Araisa, it is Nachon Ma'od to follow the Magen Avram on this. I still remember, and I'm a Talmud of Ner Yisrael, so our great uh, Mashkiach was the great uh, guy in Tzaddik, Rav David Kronglas, Zichrona Levracha. So it's still a classic story in Ner Yisrael that he was giving, uh, during Elul, he would give really fire and brimstone, uh, Musr Shmusim. Elul was a very unique experience. So one time he was saying, he, I, I, he was just bringing up the fact that he will be mayor on himself that he never missed Kriyashma according to the Zaman of Magen Avram. And when he said these words, there was thunder and lightning and the lights went out in, in the base measures. Like, like HaKadosh Baruch was maskim, you know, Hashem is mayor, you know, that that was, that that was Emes. So again, let me explain. Why is the Magen of Ram Zman earlier than the Graz Zman? Because the Magen of Ram is following the Cheshben. You go from Amud HaShachar to Tzeska Chavim Rabbeinu Tam. And Zman Kriya Shema is, the, is what? Three hours of the day. Three Shai Samaniyas. Now the truth is, it's interesting. The Shai Samaniyas of a longer day will be longer. The hour is longer. But it starts much earlier. You see? So that's why the Magen of Ram Zaman is going to be earlier because he's going with the Cheshben of Amud HaShachar to Tzesa Kaychavim of Rabbeinu Tam. And the Gra is going from Neit Sachama to Shkia. So it's an interesting little paradox, a tiny bit, that although the Magen of Ram Shai Samaniyais are longer, but because they start so much earlier, the Zaman is going to be over. So this is no gay, a lot of things. This is no gay as Zaman Kriyashma. It's no geya zaman tefila. Uh, it's no geya uh, chametz. Right? Chametz is also at, at, at various points in Erev Pesach. And you'll always see that the Magen of Ram Zaman is earlier than the Gra. And this is the basic yisait uh, of how you measure a day. Meaning you don't get to show Samaniyais till you've defined your day. So you have to define, uh, define your, your day. But again, I want to point out that if you go from Amud HaShachar, it says that Shita is using Rabbeinu Tam's Tzitzik HaChavim. That, that's very important, meaning, although in theory one could complicate it with Amud HaShachar and an earlier Tzitzik HaChavim, Lemaise, for various reasons, the post can say that doesn't work, and if you're going with that Cheshven, you're looking at the latest Tzitzik HaChavim. Uh, All right, so now let's go to Plak HaMincha. So now, Plak HaMincha 
is half, half, plug, half of the period of Mincha Ketana. Mincha Ketana is two and a half hours Zamaniyas before nightfall. So according to the Gra, Mincha Ketana is two and a half hours before Shkia. According to the uh, Magen Avram, Mincha Ketana is two and a half hours before it says the Gachavim of Rabbeinu Tam, which is itself is 72 minutes after Shkia. So Plag HaMincha is half of that point. So like the Gra, Plag HaMincha is a very easy calculation. It is one hour and 15 minutes before sunset based on Sho'o Semanios. Very important, based on Sho'o Semanios. According to uh, the Magen Avram uh, and the Bach, it would have to be one hour and 15 minutes before it says Gilchem. So again, let me give you the exact time. According to uh, the, the Magen of Ram's Cheshben, Plag HaMincha is a very, very short time. Uh, I wrote it down, I just, I always forget the numbers here. So according to the Gra, Plag HaMincha is an hour and a quarter, Zamanios before Shkia. Uh, according to uh, the uh, Magen of Ram, it is 18 minutes before Shkia. So it's very, very fascinating uh, that, as you know, the minag that's nofutz in Klal Yisrael, outside of Yerushalayim, is for the most part, lich benching is 18 minutes before Shkia. In Yerushalayim, you know, the minag is to be makdamit 40 minutes before Shkia. But once again, according to the Mugin Avram, according to the Mugin Avram and the Bach, it wouldn't be shayach to light candles earlier than 18 minutes because 18 minutes is plak mincha. By the way, let me point out that if you go with Amud HaShah, if you go with 90 minutes for Tzesek HaKhav, because there's a machlekes in Rebbeinu Tam, 72 or 90, uh, that gives you plak, plak mincha is three and a half minutes before Shkia. <laughs> Very strange. So, so once again, it's a complicated thing, and, and to try to figure out all of the ramifications of all of the shitas, you really need a computer program. It's very difficult, and that's why Maizmanim is very excellent, if you're familiar with the program. Maizmanim, they try to factor in every possible configuration. But again, the basic halacha in this matter follows the shita sagra. Uh, again, there are many areas in halacha where we don't follow the shita of the gra. The gra is not always as great as the gra was. He is not always the halacha psuka in everything. But Lagabe, the calculation of Plak HaMincha and the Zman Tfila and Kriyashma, we follow the Gra, although the Chatchila for Kriyashma, you try to follow the Magin Avram. And therefore, uh, I, I don't want to be overly confusing. I probably have already violated uh, that. Uh, but we're simply going to go with the basic Mahalech, that we measure the Shois of the day from Neitz HaChama to Shkias HaChama. We then divide that period of time by 12. That will give me what is called a Sha'a Zamanit, Sha'is Zamaniyais. And then, uh, whenever we talk about three hours or four hours or six hours or nine and a half hours, we are determining that by Sha'a Zamaniyais. And therefore, in a perfect equinox day, where from sunrise to sunset you have 12 hours, you know, when it's uh, right? So then, a, an hour is 60 minutes, indeed. And in that perfect day, Plaka Mincha would be one hour and 15 minutes. And then, every other day, you got to adjust it. In the winter, the hour is shorter. Uh, in the summer, the hour is longer. It's an hour and a quarter, Shai Simani ice, working backwards from Shkia. Right, so an hour and a quarter before Shkia, or whatever it is, uh, the... Uh, 10 and 3 quarters hours from, you can do it either way, from Nates, Nates Achama. Okay, so being, be cognizant that there is a machlokas here, but uh, the halacha basically more or less follows the shita of the gra. Uh, even though, as I say, for Kriyashma and the like, uh, you try to be machmer to follow the shita of the, of the Magin Avram. Okay, so this is Plak HaMincha. And you cannot be Makabal Shabbos earlier than Plaka Mincha. 
if candles are lit earlier than Plaka Mincha, they are a bracha levatala. And if you were Makabal Shabbos, there would be no binding Kabbalah Shabbos at all. Um, okay, um, there's a lot more to say, but uh, maybe I'll leave it for ne another, next year. You want to say? If you were to light candles and take Shabbos on yourself before Plaga Mincha, yeah. would that apply as soon as Plaga, uh, after Plaga Mincha, or would you have to take it on yourself again? Yeah, that's a good question. Apparently, it's totally Batel Nagamri, so you'd have to take it on again. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be, it would not be Chal, 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 Bichlal. Okay, so uh, this is, yeah. A couple of times you referenced uh, 18 minutes against sort of physical activity. You know, 18 minutes is the time it blocks, it doesn't block a meal. So are those, what kind of 18 minutes are those? Aren't, aren't 18 minutes of shas minus? It doesn't try to take different amounts of time to block a meal depending on the time of year. No, no, you, you are, you are you, oh, okay, no, no, okay. So here, here's the thing that, yeah, it's, it's, a, very, it's a very good point. Uh, yeah, the 18 minutes don't change, but, but their significance will be readjusted based on darkness. So, for example, if we say Amud HaShachar is uh, the amount of time it takes to walk four mil, which is 72, let's go 18 minutes, that's 72 minutes. So Amud HaShachar is 72 fixed minutes. But, 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 here's the twist. It is 72 fixed minutes only on an equinox day. And therefore, the way you would apply the formula on another day is by looking at the magnitude of equivalent darkness. So we're not making the 18 minutes Zemanios. But what we're saying is it represents a certain astronomical indicator of darkness, which you then have to, have to apply. You see? So... Uh, so I'm not changing the 18 minutes. In other words, the 18 minutes is a fact that it's uh, four mil, which is 72 minutes. But since that is a statement that's only applying to a, an, equ an equinox day, I then have to take the equivalent. Right then. These 18 minutes are 18 60 second minutes. Absolutely, absolutely. And then is, is the adjustment that I just, on an equinox day, a 18, 18 fixed minutes in 18 minutes, Shasmai is the same thing, presumably, on an equinox day, correct? On an equinox day, yeah. So is one then modifying those 18 minutes, for the purposes of measuring the 72 minutes, is one modifying the 72 minutes to, to, to just to, to do an equation to, to make it equal, or one is making an observation? How dark was it 72 minutes? That, that's exactly right. Uh, th this is called the Shitas Hamalos, and this is uh, endorsed by most postcode, although it's, it's hard to know how they knew all of this sophistication in the olden days. And that is, you're taking the 72 fixed minutes of an equinox day, you're measuring the level of darkness at that point, and then you're using the level of darkness as your that's definition. Standard. Yep, that's the standard. So it's a standard of darkness. So you're not changing the 18 minutes, but you're simply using the 18 minutes to establish a darkness standard or a light standard, whatever it would be. And as I say, that's typically 16 point something. I always forget the fraction, but 16 point something under the horizon is when you have the uh, darkness of Amud HaShachar. And that's also Tzesek HaChavim of Rabbeinu Tam. It's going to be the same. And with 90 minutes, it's going to be the same. Generally speaking, the maximum Neshef HaBoker is the same as the Neshef HaErev, meaning 72 or 90 on an equinox day. But once again, the Gaonim do not use that for the Halacha of Tzesek HaChavim, even though they're Moda astronomically. That is the extension of the Neshef. Um, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's that Plaga Mincha is 18 minutes before Shia. Yeah. That would be 18, 60 second minutes, or relatively speaking? <clears throat> No, no, no. Okay, yeah, I got you that this is confusing. Uh, in that sentence, <laughs> 18 minutes is Zemanias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, maybe it's unfortunately confusing that it happens to be the same number, uh, but, but you are 100% correct. The meaning of the number 18 minutes in terms of Plaka Mincha is 100% Zemanias. Uh, it's the 18 minutes, because, because remember, that's not connected to Hiluch Mil. In other words, that's just uh, your show Semanios of what's called Plaka Mincha. But anything connected to the Hiluch Mil, 
would be an objective 18 minutes because you know your your walking speed does not uh, does not uh, does not change. And that, that's uh, that's a good point. Necessarily, so going to the beginning, where we said that uh, the Tzitzis Shabbos, Tzitzis Yom Kippur is the rise of yeah. the Shabbos is not the rise of. That automatically means since it's not a chiv to do it, so if you do it, the kedusha is only derabon, or could it be that there's no chiv Shabbos if you do it, just like Yom Kippur, you could be Tzitzis. So it, it, it has a derabon. Yeah, yeah. Kedusha. So so that's an so that's an interesting question. Meaning meaning. What, what are the implications, that might answer the Kiddush problem I raised. Uh, what are the implications of saying that it's drabana, not Doraisa? That itself could mean two things. That could mean there's no chiv to do it Doraisa. The chiv to do it is drabana. But nonetheless, if I, I'm just, I'm just repeating your point, nonetheless, if I did it, maybe there's Kedusha Doraisa. Or does it mean, as I was assuming, that if there's no chiv to do it, it doesn't have kedusha? So what you're saying is very, very interesting, especially if we consider, I believe, the Truma Sedeshin who says that the yesod of Tosefes Shabbos V'yamtif is, it's like a netter, it's like a vow. You didn't have to make the netter, but you made the netter. On the other hand, the question becomes, unless you bring in the idea of netter, if there's no chiv to do it, mehechi tesi, there'll be kedusha. In other words, uh, you'd have to ask yourself, what would be my source for such a thing? But that is possible. That, that would, in fact, answer my kiddush. Remember, I raised the conundrum that if Tosefes Shabbos is not even Doraisa, then how can I make kiddush? It's not Shabbos Doraisa, right? Uh, but if the answer is there was no chiv, but once you do it, it becomes Doraisa. Uh, yeah, so that might be an answer. But as I say, the question is, Mehechitesi, where would you get such an idea? Uh, let me just bring, bring out as well, again, I'm getting ahead of myself, but you'll see this, I think, in the material, the very important psak of the Ramah. The Ramah says, if I was Mechabal Shabbos and you were not Mechabal Shabbos, I am allowed, I am allowed, I don't need Ramiza, to tell you directly to do Malacha, uh, for me, uh, because uh, it's not Shabbos for you, and therefore uh, there's no problem. It's a very, very important rule. We'll see, and you'll see in the material, how does that apply if a wife was Mechabela Shabbos and, and husband not, or vice versa, the husband already davened Borchu and the wife did not light Licht yet. What can the husband tell the wife to do? Again, you'll, you'll see that in the, in the material. Yeah. I'm sorry, are they what? Deraisa. Well, well, Zaman Kriyashma is, is, is the Oraisa. Uh, Zaman Tfila uh, would, not, would not be the Oraisa because uh, even if Tfila is the Oraisa, which is a Machlekes Rambam and Ramban, Zaman and Tfila are 100% to Rabbanit because the Oraisa you could have in the whole day. Zaman Kriyashma is totally on Beshach Bacha Uve Kumecha. So, but Pashtus, although you, know, you, could, you could debate this too, but Pashtus, when Chazal says Zaman Kriyashma is uh, the end of three hours of the day, uh, they are positing that this is considered to be Zaman Kima. And if it's Zaman Kima, it would have the status of a Doraisa. Okay, um, be well and much uh, Hatzlacha. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.